What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, we're gonna check out 10 WWE gimmicks that lasted seconds. Now, Vince, creative, whoever is in the back, is in charge at the time, they may come up with some uh, gimmick for a wrestler, you know, maybe a gimmick change or to repackage someone. Sometimes it works, most of the time it don't. You guys remember when Chad Gable was Shorty G at one point? Horrible. Just horrible. Whoever came up with that in the back, why was that approved? It was awful. And it didn't last long. So we're going to check out some of the instances where someone creatively, whether it's Vince or the plethora of writers they had, said, you know what? This would be a pretty cool gimmick for this person, only for this said person to go out there, look like a complete moron, and they scrap it. But hey, trial and error. That's what, you know, that's what wrestling is. A trial and error, man. And a lot of times, it's numbered errors. So we're going to get right into this one. Let's check this out. Throughout WWE history, they've been known to introduce fans to a brand new gimmick or persona and then proceed to pull that gimmick from TV without any logical kayfabe explanation. The gimmick in question is usually poorly received by the audience, so WWE believe that they have no other choice but to abandon their initial creative pitch and go back to the drawing board. Join us now as yeah. WrestleMania looks at 10 WWE gimmicks that lasted seconds. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new channel, WrestleMania Shorts. Number 10, Eugene Villainous Persona. Now, the Eugene character was one of the more controversial characters of the Ruthless Aggression era and by 2006, his character had become incredibly stale. To combat this yeah. staleness, WWE took a daring approach with Eugene's character and they decided to turn him heel. Following a match on Raw which pitted Eugene and Jim Duggan against the Spirit Squad, Eugene that. attacked Duggan to the surprise of the audience. His villainous persona would continue in the following weeks with him attacking Val Venus and he would even try to take out DX. The crowd reacted poorly to this heel turn as it made no sense whatsoever and it wasn't before long that Eugene would revert to his infamous babyface persona. WWE decided to ignore Eugene's heel run altogether which ultimately <laughs> further damaged any sense of continuity and substance the Eugene character had. Number 9. Midian. Naked Midian. I ain't gonna lie to you though. Just the Eugene character in itself was... Was a wild one. I got it. it was a wild one, bro. It definitely was. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it at that. Most fans know Midian for his time in the Undertaker's Ministry of Darkness stable. However, unfortunately for Midian, when the stable disbanded in 99, he was without a meaningful place on the card, so they were forced to come up with something brand new for the former European champion. WWE would reintroduce Midian as Naked Midian. He would randomly show up during Raw and SmackDown wearing nothing but a fanny pack and a thong. This gimmick was truly insane and there was no rhyme or reason as to why he was suddenly acting in this erratic manner. Why? This new character would receive a somewhat substantial push in October 2000 as he would challenge William Regal for the European title, but he was unsuccessful. This ludicrous why? gimmick would eventually be dropped in the months following the No Mercy event and Midian would be pulled from WWE television with no explanation. Number 8. Ted DiBiase Who thought of DiBiase that? Posse. When the Legacy faction was disbanded in 2010, Ted DiBiase Jr. struggled to find an investable character uh -huh. and this ultimately led to a demotion down the card. Whereas fellow Legacy member Cody Rhodes introduced the world to dashing Cody Rhodes, DiBiase's attempts at a new character all fell flat. Uh -huh. The most notorious character of DiBiase was known as the DiBiase Posse. And I didn't even know that was, was forgettable. I forgot was an about understatement. it. <laughs> the DiBiase Posse gimmick would launch in 2011 and it featured DiBiase as a babyface persona who would host tailgate parties for fans before WWE events. This gimmick could have worked, but DiBiase was evidently struggling in the charisma department, oh. and fans ultimately rejected DiBiase as a babyface. This failed gimmick. I didn't even know. Didn't even know that was a thing. Honestly, didn't know. Would lead to the former legacy member falling even further down the card, where he would eventually remain until his release in 2013. Number seven, Brodus Clay, main event player. 
One of the problems with comedic gimmicks such I as the Funkasaurus is that they have a short shelf life. A gimmick of this nature was going to inevitably get stale. This was most definitely the case with Clay's dancing dinosaur gimmick. Yeah. When Clay ditched the gimmick, he would debut a brand new persona known as the main event player. The issue here was that Clay had no personality with the character. He was average in the ring and there was not a single fan that was I wanting to see this Clay pushed the into too. the main event scene. It's no wonder the gimmick completely flopped and Clay would find himself moved back to NXT for further development. Number 6. Rene Dupree, Most Extreme Athlete in ECW History and One of the wrestlers WWE saw a ton of value in during the Ruthless Aggression era was Rene Dupree. Dupree was young, he had a great physique and his in-ring work was decent. In 2006, WWE attempted to make Dupree one of the top heels on the newly revamped ECW brand. Mm. Dupree would label himself as the most extreme athlete in ECW history. Dupree would pride himself on his appearance and the idea behind the character seemed to be that Dupree was everything that the traditional ECW roster wasn't. Dupree was made for Raw or SmackDown, but WWE in all likelihood believed that placing Dupree in ECW would be a catalyst for major heel heat. Mm -hmm. This gimmick change failed, as the ECW audience just went interested in Dupree. And it wasn't before long that WWE began to reevaluate Dupree's position on the ECW roster. Dupree reformed La Resistance with Sylvain Grenier in 2007, but this reunion was short lived as Dupree was suspended for a wellness policy violation. Oh. Just a few months after this policy violation, Dupree would request his WWE release, and this put an end to the WWE career Damn. of the former tag team champion. Yeah, he probably would have worked better on a Monday Night Raw or SmackDown. Granted, WWE's version of ECW was never really going to capture what ECW used to be. They It was really just Vince McMahon's idea of what he could do with the brand, just making a third brand for television. That was really it. Number five, almost bodyguard slash giant ninja. I do vaguely remember this too. Lesnar at WrestleMania 39. He had a persona that seemed to only last for a few weeks. In 2020, almost would debut as a member of Akira Tozawa's ninja faction. Amos was obviously the tallest member of the faction and he was referred to as the Giant Ninja. This gimmick would go virtually nowhere and it wasn't before long that Amos was being presented as a doorman and bouncer for Shane McMahon's Raw Underground. Mm -hmm. It was clear at this point in time that WWE were trying out different gimmicks with Amos and he would mm -hmm. quickly transition into a tag team partnership with AJ Styles which gave Amos his most successful character run to date. Which Number 4. Crazy. Brian Kendrick, The Mascot Brian Kendrick has had a number of gimmicks throughout his wrestling career, mm -hmm. but his very first gimmick in WWE was perhaps his most unusual. Kendrick's first gimmick in WWE would see him become a mascot on Velocity. Kendrick would then represent the local sports team of whichever town WWE were in, and he would change his name each and every week. It wouldn't be long before... That's funny, bro. Anytime you win, I'm just going to be your team's mascot, and we're going to... We're going to go ahead and get the win, guys. <laughs> WWE scrapped this concept for a gimmick, and they would rethink what character Kendrick was going to have when he eventually debuted on SmackDown. I definitely like when he was on the uh, part of the tag team for SmackDown, bro. I, I definitely do. When he was part of that tag team for SmackDown, that shit was cold. Down. Number 3. Big Show Impersonator <clears throat> a Following WrestleMania 16, WWE decided to give Big Show a brand new gimmick. Big Show had just main evented WrestleMania, but instead of continuing this strong presentation of the former WWE Champion, they decided to turn Big Show into a full-blown comedic character. Uh -huh. Big Show would begin to dress up as a random wrestler from the past and present. The names Big Show impersonated included the likes of Rikishi, The Berserker, Val Venus, and would even dress as Hulk Hogan to become the what showster. The, fuck, the gimmick did showcase Big Show's charisma, <laughs> but gimmicks of this nature get stale very quickly, and Facts. this was the case here. WWE did give Big Show a pay-per-view match with this persona in which he defeated Kurt Angle at the Backlash pay-per-view. But when watching this match, it's clear that Big Show just needed to go back to being a menacing threat and that's why the gimmick was quickly dropped. Yeah, <laughs> it, it works for a little bit, but eventually it's like, it's not something that has some long-term value to it. Number two, Jeff Hardy, conflicted Jeff Hardy. At the start of 2003, WWE took a huge risk by turning Jeff Hardy heel. Hardy mm -hmm. would begin to attack fellow babyfaces such as Rob Van Dam and Shawn Michaels and the fans outright rejected Hardy as a heel. Yeah. Whilst moral conflict in a character is good, it has to be executed well. It has to be delivered within the right storyline. This heel run was never going to work and WWE quickly realized the error of their ways and reverted Hardy back to being yep. a beloved babyface. 
TNA would attempt to portray Hardy as a heel seven years later in 2010, and whilst this had more success, the fans just wanted to cheer Jeff, it's likely that he'll remain as a popular babyface until the day he finally retires. Yeah, it's hard to... You can do it with Matt, more so, but Jeff, nah. He's one of those guys, he's just... He's so beloved by so many people, it's hard to boo the guy. It is, so... At least WWE was able to capture it quickly. It's like, yeah, this is not gonna work. And number one, Albert, hip hop hippo. And Matt Bloom has been given endless gimmicks during yeah. his numerous stints in WWE. Some of these gimmicks are notorious for all the wrong reasons. And one of these was when Bloom went from being a member of the X Factor as Albert to a dancing hippo known as the hip hop hippo. Mm. Albert with this gimmick would join forces with the incredibly popular Scotty Too Hotty. And Vince McMahon was trying to replicate the success of Too Cool, but it wasn't the same. Albert looked insanely awkward dancing around the ring and it was clear to fans that this was a poor imitation of Too Cool. When they realized that turning Albert into a dancing hippo wasn't working, they decided to disband the tag team of himself and Scotty and once again rebranded the former Intercontinental Champion. WWE's next idea was to rebrand Albert as A-Train and this involved somewhat of a push with feuds with the likes of Edge and The Undertaker, mm -hmm. but it wasn't before long that this gimmick also became notably stale. Yep. Well, there you have it folks, yeah. WWE And then I think he got rebranded again as Tensai or something like that, bro. It just... It, People just didn't care. Whatever gimmick he ended up being, it maybe had a little bit of buzz, a little bit of interest, but then after that, he didn't care. People just didn't care. They've repackaged him so many times. People just like, yeah, get him off my screen. So comment down below. Let me know some other horrible gimmicks that WWE has come up with for their wrestlers. Let me know down below. But I appreciate all love and support. Guys, Sean on channel road to 150k. And I'm still here on the speed of YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See you on the next one.